This is Visitor's Book and I'm Maya, your host and a journalist from Finland. Like always, we're going to be meeting with foreigners and diplomats who are here in Pakistan and we're going to find out what their experience in the country has been. So let's go! So today we're going to be meeting with the Italian ambassador Stefano Pontecorvo and his wife Lydia. So let's go see him. Hello. Hello. It's so nice, nice to, meet to you. see you. Please, please sit down. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Thank you so much. So tell me, how long have you been here in Pakistan now? I've been three and a half years. Okay, that's that's quite a long time already. It's quite a long time, and might even get longer. And I'm yeah? pretty happy at the prospect. Okay, so so you like it here then? I like it here. In fact, I mean. I, w I had a two-year posting and I asked for a two-year extension and now I'm considering asking for another two-year extension, so that <laughs> answers your question. <laughs> That's amazing. And you mentioned earlier to me that this is actually not the first time you've been to Pakistan. No. I lived in Pakistan as a kid from 1968 to 1970. I left when I was 13 and uh, I have some wonderful memories of that period. Yeah. It was a different Pakistan, which is coming, I see coming back. Really? That's and interesting. Yes. But uh, the people were, as usual, great people, friendly. Islamabad was a, a small village mm -hmm. and uh, completely safe. Yeah. Uh, times have changed. Have, times had, have changed, but I see them changing back to where they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once in in what sense? Time. In the sense that. Uh, uh, there's a lot of optimism. Mm -hmm. There is uh, a lot more stability. The army has done a great job in, you know, in stabilizing the country. The governments have done their bit, uh, and I, I, I feel I've been here, as I say, from since uh, end of 2015, yeah. and I feel that there's a renewed optimism towards this country, yeah. and I think it's perfectly right because uh, it has an enormous potential, which is slowly coming out and uh, we are here to help uh, also to help that uh, optimism then con translate into concrete progress in whatever way we can yeah so that's actually what I wanted to ask you about like what kind of work does Italy do here in Pakistan well uh, we Pakistan and, and Italy have a complementary economies mm -hmm. Uh, we have started off as a mainly agriculture nation and uh, so we've maintained a very strong agriculture and agro-industrial connotation which is can be very helpful here. We are working actually on a number of sectors here. ENI is drilling the Kekra One. They've been here for 20 years. We have been here for the with automotive. Uh, we're coming back slowly with Iveco. Piaggio had a uh, Piaggio used to have a uh, a plant here, and uh, we are trying to get them back in interest in the into the in, in the country. Not to forget the Tarbela Dam, which was so infrastructure. Okay. And then we are pretty strong in. Uh, the medical field, so we have uh, we are three Italian companies which actually have Pakistani subsidiaries mm -hmm. in pharmaceuticals. We have marble and mining. We're working a lot. We're working a lot on textile and textile machinery. Pakistan is the sixth market for textile machinery in Italy, mm. and uh, yes, and Pakistani entrepreneurs are buying very good machines, very costly machines. Uh, which give them a good product and so hopefully I mean slowly they'll float towards the added the higher added value segments of the market denim and Pakistan is a superpower in denim mm. uh, we are in fact in three areas which is denim marble and mining and uh, leather goods we're setting up here three centers of excellence to be able to transfer know-how and technology of how we do it to Pakistan. And in this we are helped by the fact that uh, there is a lot of very talented people in yeah. this country. The, skill, the workforce and all the companies who have come here find a very skilled workforce and very dedicated workforce. I mean, you see, I'm not fasting, <laughs> but under this weather, people who manage to fast and not drink for 16 hours a day and work as hard as they used to mm. 
in normal circumstances, I mean, that, that shows you the, 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 the really the temperament of the Pakistani worker. Absolutely, that's very true. And uh, as I was mentioning to you earlier, we have the second biggest uh, Pakistani community in mm. Italy. Yes. In, in Europe, is in Italy around 200,000 people. They're that, fully, not a lot of people know that, actually. Not a lot of people know yeah. that. Uh, they contribute very much to our economy. Mm -hmm. uh, they, not one of them is in jail or in court, so <laughs> they don't create trouble. Yeah. Every once in a while we have, you know, some issues, but mm -hmm. on 200,000 people you always find, you know, somebody who's, who gives you a problem. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're very well integrated. They're making a livelihood, a good livelihood for themselves. They're buying up uh, Italian companies and becoming inter small and medium entrepreneurs. I think they're doing very well. Yeah, so um, I also read on, I think on your Twitter, that um, Italy is working on sustainable tourism here in Pakistan, yes. is that correct? Yes, we're doing that. Yeah. We've started with a small pilot project, <clears throat> which uh, is practically a, a tracing, trekking trails, both in Swat, where we have an archeological mission since 70 years, 60, yeah, around 70 years, and uh, in uh, Gilgit uh, to exploit both the beauties of the country, the natural beauty of the country, and the rich cultural heritage it has. So the idea is, that we've already started this actually, we are training, we have trained already a group, a first group of uh, trekking guides. Mm -hmm. We are now tracing the trails, which will then be published in a book and on websites and so on. And then we are in the th second and third phase, which we're taking together of the project, we will be providing uh, shelters for for trekkers, mm. which me I mean, these trails are six to eight days, mm. so you have to stop, you have to you know you have to sleep and eat and so on. Yeah, yeah. And so we're putting in place the infrastructure which will allow this. Wow! And is that targeting more like local tourists or also international tourists? We are hoping to get in international tourists, uh, you know, the Pakistani mountains, uh, Gilgit and uh, K2 and so on, they have a, a very strong appeal mm. um, uh, for internationals and, uh, you know, Pakistan is, is becoming more and more flavor of the month in, uh, in the West. Uh, yeah. And so we're seeing, we had a group of Italian tourists here which uh, went to see the archaeological sites and also went to Gilgit. So it is, uh, we are targeting in the long run the international tourists, but mm -hmm. of course the local tourists uh, yeah. are, are, will make up the bulk of, 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 of the people who will go there, yeah, because yeah. of course it's easier to get there. Yeah, interesting. And tell me a little bit more about this archaeological mission that you mentioned. Now, the archaeological mission was set up uh, 62 years ago, mm -hmm. when SWAT was still a, a entity of its own. Yeah. And uh, we've been there ever since. Uh, we have uh, they, Professor Tucci and his successors. Now there's Professor Olivieri, who got Sitar Imtiaz for his services last year. Uh, yeah, it was last year. And they have unearthed the big part of the Gandhara civilization and the Buddhist civilization. And now they're working on uh, near Barikot. They are. They have discovered Bazira which was this uh, famous city which was taken by Alexander the Great and whose whereabouts was not certain. Now they're certain that it was uh, what is now the, 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 the city which is now called Barikot in Swat. So they're making some incredible discoveries. And uh, also what is coming out, which is kind of nearly revolutionary, is the proof that this part of the world had contacts with the Mediterranean a lot before we thought they did. Really? So yes. So it is. I mean, so it is. It, 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 it's very exciting from uh, for, for for a historian and for an archaeologist. Yeah, yeah. And and you like regularly have professors from Italy coming in and teams and. We have permanently. We have a, a team permanently there. Oh really? And uh, the head comes and goes because he, he teaches also in university. Yeah. But we have. Uh, it's become now an international team. We had a professor from Oxford, uh, but we have permanently. Uh, especially during the excavation periods, uh, we have permanently a team of at least three or four Italians there. Oh, that's fascinating. 
And another thing that I think a lot of people don't know about Italy and Pakistan is that you're actually the fourth largest investor in this country, is that correct? That is correct. A uh, large part of that uh, it comes from uh, Pakist Italians of Pakistani origin mm -hmm, who yeah. reinvest in their country. Right. And the fact that we are growing on the scale goes to show that I'm not the only one who has uh, big faith in the potential of this country and seeing it moving in the right direction but also the Pakistanis who know their country better than I do mm. are repatriating a lot of money so that uh, yeah. and then there are Italian companies who are investing here some are putting up shop our de biggest defense company has opened a subsidiary here we have uh, two pharmaceutical company companies who have established uh, Pakistani, sub Pakistani companies here uh, they're both in Lahore uh, so things are moving, uh, moving and they're moving pretty fast. Great. And are there a lot of Pakistanis who are interested in going to Italy to study, to work or anything like anything like that going on? There is a lot. Now we give, I think we are the embassy that gives the highest numbers of visas in this country. Hmm. It's around 20,000. Of that, more than half are family reunion visas, which are Pakistanis who are already there yeah. and who are bringing in their family. I see, yeah. Then there's uh, an increase of business visas mm -hmm. with, the, with the increase of, uh, of the business opportunities between, uh, between the two countries. Mm. And uh, lately, we have, uh, we have also increased uh, uh, the number of visas we give to Pakistani students who go and study okay. in Italian universities. Yeah, that's yeah, it's not that it's not because of anything particular we're doing. Mm. It's that people are realizing that uh, we have 18 universities which are pretty well ranked, very well yeah. ranked. Some of them, uh, Polytechnic of Milano is one that comes to mind, and um, so they want to go there to study. Also because it is the same quality as other countries and relatively cheap. Mm. I mean, you can, uh, a tuition fees in a uh, high-ranked Italian university goes from 1,200 euros to 2,000 euros. And yeah. Italy is a relatively inexpensive country. That's true, yeah. And uh, so it is, uh, you get uh, the best of both worlds. Mm. You get a good education, you live in a friendly country, and which is not to say that other countries are not friendly. <laughs> <laughs> And the food is great, <laughs> and you get a good tuition. You get a good tuition. Yeah. Uh, last year, I think we gave above 200 visas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, this year, we have already 6,000 uh, applications. Yeah, yeah. There is no quota whatsoever. Whoever has the requirements can go. It's we have no quotas whatsoever. I mean, the more good Pakistani students we send, the, the happier we are. Yeah. And do you have like degree programs in English or are they studying in Italian? The, these 18 universities I'm talking about and they span from medicine to um, technical uh, to mechanics uh, to banking and uh, to agri agri-sciences, they're all in English. Yeah, yeah. So you can get a degree and you can get a PhD also in English. Great. So then next, I actually wanted to ask because you're very well known here in Pakistan because of your social media presence, especially on Twitter, is that, do you think that's something that's required these days of a diplomat? I think it is required also because uh, this, the, the fact that, you know, this mi mis mystery of what a diplomat does mm. is something which should be dispelled. Yeah. And uh, so I, I like to interact on Twitter with, uh, with whoever has a good taste, I would say, of following me. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Because it, 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 it gives me also the pulse of what's going on, mm -hmm. of, what, uh, of what people think outside of, you know, of the official circles which we all, uh, which we all uh, here uh, have to do with. Yeah. And it has also the advantage of giving me a feedback on how we are doing. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, a number of inefficiencies that the consulate had and the embassy had, I discovered them through Twitter. So people who were telling me, and I, you go and see, and oh, they're right. And so I think that we have done a number of things of improvements, we've taken a number of improvements, because I got to know 
about them through Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Yeah. People write, and uh, I, I find it a personal success that people write to you. Yeah. I, mean, I have ambassador, I have a problem. And right. then, of course, I cannot answer everybody. Yeah. But if the problem is repeated, then I know there is a problem. Exactly, yeah. I mean, there is always, you know, the guy who has had, uh, who has an issue and it, 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 it's his or her fault. Mm. Unfortunately, in the past, now we put that straight. When the guy or the lady had a problem and a number of them had a problem, then it was because we could do things better and mm -hmm. we're doing them better. Yeah, yeah. No, that's I right. think it's now it's recognized that, I mean, the, the embassy and the consulate are are quicker, are more efficient, are more user friendly, are more public friendly. And that I get from, I got from, starting from a number of messages I got on Twitter, a number of tweets uh, that I read and so. Yeah, no, that, that sounds like a really good way of engaging the public. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, and I think another reason that people like to follow you on Twitter is because you're constantly posting these really positive um, tweets about Pakistan, like pictures from all over the country and so on. Do you think that's something that uh, Pakistanis really, um, I mean, th is that something that's surprising for Pakistanis, that a foreigner really likes the country? I think it is, and I am surprised that they're surprised, because <laughs> it is, uh, this is a great country. Yeah. I mean, people are fabulous. Uh, the country is a strong country, it has a lot of potential, mm. uh, it, it's gone through hard times, but I mean anybody in a tough neighborhood like the one uh, that Pakistan is in, I mean I'm talking about the, the, the Afghanistan war, yeah. uh, would be kind of, you know, kind of where, you're, where are we going? Mm. But, uh, and, and maybe you lose sight of what you really are and mm. what you really can become and what you are becoming. Yeah, fascinating. And I also must comment on your, your dress. This is, um, this looks quite Pakistani, correct? <laughs> it does look quite Pakistani, but I mean, Pakistan, I find Pakistani dress is very elegant. Uh, yeah. My wife also dresses uh, often in, uh, mm. in Pakistani. At the beginning, you know, you come here and if you're not used to it, it looks as if, you know, a whole bunch of guys have walked out in their pajamas. Uh, then, actually, you look at the shabar kameez and it's very elegant. Yeah, it is. It's really very elegant. Yeah. And uh, so I adopt it uh, because it's very, I mean, it also shows that the people are smart here because they have managed to uh, come up with a dress which is functional mm -hmm. and elegant. It's cool. I don't know how they do it. It's cool in the summer and it keeps you warm in the winter. So. Yeah, brilliant. No, I, I think my wife has arrived, uh, uh, and so if you want to go and if we want to go and meet her, she's uh, she'll be waiting for us in the garden. Okay, sounds great. Okay. So let's go. Let's go. interesting pictures you have here. Yes, yeah, so this is a bit the history of the Italian archaeological mission. This is Professor Tucci and Professor Facenda who were the, the two heads of the mission. Right. That was a Olio Swat. This photograph is particularly interesting mm -hmm. because it is the opening of the General Ayub Khan, the President of Pakistan, oh. Professor Tucci, at the opening of the Swat Museum, which we financed and built twice actually. Oh really? The first time in this occasion, 1963, and uh, the second time when the Taliban's destroyed it when they were you know, mm. rampaging the valley, mm. and we rebuilt it. The Swat Museum is a new museum. Is a new museum, and this is pretty interesting because at the time, and probably little known also by Pakistanis, Swat was an entity in, in itself. It was not yet incorporated in Pakistan. Right. The very first Pakistani law that applied to SWAT was a law on protection of the archaeological uh, hmm. findings. Really? And that, after that, then they saw that it wasn't so difficult to, to apply Pakistani law there to well. uh, independent territory. Yeah. Wow. And so that was, uh, so it was the first, the first Pakistani law where they bring in all the others and helped in some way integrate SWAT into Pakistan. Wow. Because the legal framework was already there. Of course, archaeology archaeology is a small part of it. Mm. But then other laws followed. Yeah. But these guys were the first ones. 
That's fascinating. And this, you weren't here at this time yet. It was later. No, I was here from 1968 to 1970. Yeah, and your father was working for the embassy then. Is yes, that, he was yeah. a deputy head of embassy. Yeah, exactly. And you mentioned that you used to live somewhere pretty close to Ayub's house. Is that? Yes, I lived in F631, mm -hmm. house number 40, yeah. in front of General Ayub's house, which is now the Hashwani residence. Yeah, yeah. That's fascinating. Okay. Great times. There we go. All right, time to take a short break. See you soon. Lydia, this is my wife, Lydia. Oh, wonderful oh. to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Hello. My name is Lydia. I'm Maya. Thank you for having me. Please. Thank you. Have a seat. So, You've also been here um, since 2015, is that correct? Right, that's yeah. correct. Did it, was it like what you expected Pakistan to be like? Better, I would say. Um, when I came here, I already came with an open heart, if I can say so, because I heard many, many stories about Pakistan. Uh, during our marriage, it's more than 30 years we're married. Yeah, well. And uh, because my husband lived here when he was a kid. Exactly, yes. So um, I came knowing that I would have had a very nice experience. Mm. And I'm really glad to say that the experience is even nicer than I thought. Yeah. So I'm very happy to be here and, you know, I like it very much. Great. And I actually wanted to ask you both, what, what is your daily routine like? Like, do you even get enough time to get out of the embassy and go around the city? Do you get to go to restaurants? What, what do you do normally? Yes, both of you? I do. Let's say that I'm, I'm a volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning that, uh, you know, I'm here and uh, I try to help as much as possible. Okay my, let's say, duty, you know, because uh, we have a lot of guests right. uh, coming to our residence, so mm. we, I organize events, lunch, dinners, and so yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. But I do have time for myself, mm. and uh, when possible, you know, I go out, simply sightseeing a bit, uh, a bit of shopping, jewelry, yeah. and so on, art. Mm. There's a lot of art going on, so it's also very nice to go to visit galleries, you know, and uh, sometimes I also buy, you know, some uh, nice uh, pictures and uh, and then what else? Um, I meet friends, yeah. you know, international friends, Pakistani mm. friends. Yeah, yeah. I'm into some uh, groups uh, like uh, the uh, Asian study group okay. uh, or the IFWA, which wow. is the International Foreign Women Association. We do organize also charity events. Mm. So I'm pretty busy. Yeah, it sounds like it. So what kind of cultural events does Italy organize here? What, what, what do you focus on? Well, we focus uh, on uh, trying to spread our own cu uh, Italian culture, which is not very well known. Yeah. In, uh, in here. By the way, on this, it has nothing to do with uh, Italian culture, but uh, for the first time, Pakistan has a pavilion at the Bin uh, Biennale of Venice, which is uh, the major art event in the world. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, Pakistan uh, has its own pavilion, so that's, that's a big success. Last year, we organized, uh, also this has nothing to do with Italian, with Italian culture, we organized the biggest ever exposition and auction of Pakistani contemporary artists in Milan. It was a big hit, a big success. Yes. Everything was sold. Mm. Uh, more together with artists. more than wow. 60 artists. Pakistani go down from, artists. Yeah, from Rashid Rana to uh, Qureshi to Ayesha. I mean, they were all there. That's fascinating. And so that, that spreads a bit and it, 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 it hit the headlines for three or four days. In that's Italy? In Italy. Wow. So that, that's also a way of, you know, getting Pakistan better known no, because the, the the art scene here is is, is is really incredibly lively, and the quality is is, is, is wonderful. As concerns us, uh, we bring in singers. Uh, mm. Opera is of course our trademark. Yeah, I and think there we, was somebody at the face uh, not too long ago. Was that yes? Also that was also we bought in some uh, a cappella singers. 
to Lahore at the uh, NCA, it's called actually in Lahore. Hmm. Uh, I was mixed up between PNCA and NCA. <laughs> and uh, then, well, our national day is a cultural event in itself, and uh, it's all the credit goes to Baji. <laughs> yeah, everybody calls me Baji, yeah. and I call them Baji, yeah, which is nice. I it like is. it very much. Yeah. And uh, and uh, what has also is a big hit with the Pakistani public is we have two very well-known Italian mountain film festivals, mm -hmm. and we're replicating them here. Uh, we do them at the Margala Hotel, and uh, it's a two-day event uh, in which we show about a dozen to sixteen films. And uh, there's a lot of public, and it, it's, you know, it, it shows you know the Italian mountains, or the feats that foreigners and not only Italians have done on the Pakistani mountains. Oh, this year, we'd like to dedicate it to Daniele Nardi, who is, uh, who was, one of our great uh, alpinists who recently tried uh, the Mummery Trail on the Nanga Parbat and uh, and died on it together with Tom Ballard. So we'd like to devote, de dedicate it to him. Great. So where are you both from in Italy, actually? I'm from the northern part of Italy, mm -hmm. uh, Piemonte region. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm uh, from Torino, from my mother's side. And Cuneo, which is a smallest town, very nice, mm. very green, near the mountains, uh, from my father's side. Okay. Yes. And what about you, Mr. Ambassador? I'm uh, effectively from, I originate from the Amalfi Coast, uh, but uh, Actually, I must consider myself a Roman because I was born in Thailand. Yeah. Then I lived in uh, Afghanistan, Sri Lanka, and Pakistan, and then went back. And when I went back, it was, it was in Rome. So yeah, our yeah, roots yeah. are on the Amalfi Coast in Positano, but uh, which is a beautiful town. Yeah, wonderful. But uh, mm. we effectively we live in Rome. Okay, amazing. So you have pretty famously mentioned on Twitter at least that you think that Pakistanis are the Italians of Asia and the other way around. How did you come up with something like this? What are the similarities? Well, because we <coughs> initially we, we both of us felt immediately at home in mm -hmm. Pakistan. Yes. <coughs> and that was because we got to immediately to know a number of Pakistani friends. Yeah. And uh, going to their houses and you know seeing the way the interaction—it's like being in Italy, you know, with yeah. the grandmother who, the wife who always is the one that commands in the house. <laughs> and uh, we are no exception. <laughs> and the Pakistan oh, is no exception. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, you know the grandmother, the kids under the table, under the table, and at, at all levels, it, it's 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 exactly like being in Italy. It's yeah, a very it's a family. Uh, it's a very family. Yeah. That's true. Yes. And the family ties, the family bonds are very important here, yeah. as they are in uh, in Italy. Friendship is very important, although, I mean, you make a Pakistani friend, I think you make him for life. Yeah. And uh, it, 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 one thing which has not, I've lived, we have lived in a number of different countries. This is the only place in which naturally a good friend, I call him a brother. So that, I mean, it, yeah. it, it, it's, it, it's so similar. Yeah. that uh, it's, for me it was a natural, natural comparison. Yeah, and I think you also have this kind of like a very relaxed attitude to life. I would say me as a Scandinavian, I, we are always like, let's yeah. do this, let's do this. And then Italians and I don't know, Spaniards are much more relaxed in Europe, and I now think. We are the promoter of the Dolce Vita. Exactly. <laughs> but there, you know, there, yeah. Which doesn't mean that we do not work, exactly. you know, <laughs> but course. we also know how to enjoy life. Yeah. Which, which is, is another similarity with uh, Pakistanis because we enjoy life, but we work very hard, both yeah. of us. I mean, Italy came out of the war devastated and mm. in 30 years we became a G7 country yeah. with a small population and with only, you know, no natural resources or... Mm. Pakistan is blessed with uh, natural resources and an equally talented uh, people. Yeah. So the, I see the same trajectory for, for Pakistan and a lot closer than you think. Yeah. No, oh, great. And another similarity or, or a connection, more I would say, is that Italy has for a long time had a very good relationship with Muslim countries. Is that right? That's that's correct. Yeah. We have always had a very uh, a very close relation mm. with uh, and a non-conflictual relation with Muslim countries. A bit because we're in the Mediterranean, mm. and uh, then from there, you know, you you kind of you know you kind of spread out, and also because we're we're we're, we're very tolerant. Yeah. Uh, although, you know, this last wave of legal immigration 
has changed some perceptions, mm. but fundamentally we remain a tolerant society. Yeah. Uh, the biggest mosque in Europe is in Rome, and the biggest uh, Islamic cultural center in Europe is in Rome, and uh, it was there by volition of the Italian government and with the absolute support of the church. So, I mean, that uh, we are tolerant and uh, yeah. we, like, uh, we like diversity. If you go from the north or the south of Italy, you'll find, you know, it, it, they, they don't look like a different country, but there's a lot of, you know, differences. So we've learned to live with each other mm. and live with others. Yeah, <laughs> okay. All right, it's time to take a short break. See you in a bit. Welcome back. It's time to try some delicious Italian coffee. So, have you found it difficult to find good coffee here? <laughs> Is that like, has that been challenging for you? Not really. They do sell Italian coffee. Quite a few brands, Lavazza, Segafredo and others. So it's not difficult at all. Yeah, great. And what about Italian food? You mentioned that you did this uh, event in Lahore, but I think otherwise it's quite difficult to find good Italian food in Pakistan, right? I would okay. say no. no. I mean, there are some products that it's not so easy to find, yeah. yes, but majorly, you know, it's possible to cook very good Italian cuisine yeah. with the local products mm. because um, they have a lot of vegetables and Italian cuisine does use a lot of vegetables. Um, we can find uh, good Italian extra virgin olive oil, mm. which is fundamental for the Italian cuisine. Mm -hmm. And uh, meat, fish, fruit, you know, there's everything. Yeah. Uh, maybe it lacks uh, some particular products like uh, parmigiano. Yeah, the cheese is difficult. Uh, the cheese, right? uh, but uh, we do find it once in a while. Okay. Yeah. On the olive oil, I say you can also find some very good uh, Pakistani olive oil yeah. because we introduced uh, through a cooperation project. Uh -huh. We introduced olive growing in this uh, in this country, uh, like really? yeah. In the old days, mm -hmm. uh, your crew will remember that in the old days uh, they did not eat strawberries because they weren't here, yeah. and uh, we bought them in with a cooperation program. We're oh. doing the same oh. with yeah. So if you guys are now eating strawberries, it's because <laughs> we introduced them Some to Italians. To, yeah. <laughs> Uh, although That's they're not typically an Italian product, but yeah. it was a program we did and, and it worked out. That's fascinating. And uh, the olive uh, has just taken off like, uh, it's taken off very, very well. Mm. We, we started the whole thing with a cooperation project and mm -hmm. uh, in cooperation with uh, the Pakistan Agricultural Research Center and uh, the Barani Institute and with a couple of universities. And now it's spreading all across because it's... Uh, we bought in a type of olive tree which we experimented in Tunisia mm -hmm. and uh, now it's working very well here. Yeah, that's And great. so you can find good olive oil, you can good find in good olives. Yeah. So the whole lot. Yeah, all is there. What about restaurants? Do you ever go to any like uh, Italian or Western restaurants here? Are there any good ones that you could mention? That's Listen, more difficult. No, no, that's the, <laughs> no, there are many very good Pakistani restaurants. So, you know, from the north to the center to the south, yeah. uh, there are um, very good international uh, cuisine restaurants, yeah. oriental uh, restaurants, and also some Italian ones yeah. in Islamabad, in mm -hmm. Lahore, and in Karachi. Yeah. And uh, we also have uh, in Islamabad, in Karachi, and Lahore, um, Italian cooks, mm. chefs, yeah. and maybe also in other cities, which we don't know, but uh, certainly in these three major cities, we do have, uh, so it's possible to eat good Italian uh, food mm. in Pakistan, in restaurants, Great. yes. Wow. Have you ever gotten the chance to try this uh, Peshawari pizza, which is like a naan, and then they put these pizza, whatever, <laughs> fillings there? Yes. Have, you, have you tried that? Yes. How is it? It's different, but it's good. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> and uh, pizza, it's a very creative um, 
you know, um, kind of food because also in Italy there are the so-called classical pizzas like margarita, uh, marinara and others. But you know, when uh, pizza uh, was born, by the way, it was born by pure chance because mm. uh, it was asked to make something, you know, different and the chef at that time invented pizza. Mm. And... Um, For Queen Margarita, that's where yeah, the Margarita that's comes from. Right, exactly. She was in visit, a visit to Naples and uh, they bought her a piece of bread and said, well, put something on it and the guy didn't know what to do. He had <laughs> tomato and <laughs> mozzarella, mozzarella and put it in. Uh, yes. That's so funny. <laughs> and, uh, so pizza, as I said, it's a very creative kind of... Uh, recipe because yeah. you know you put more or less whatever you have in the house yeah exactly you know uh, so the peshawar one it's different but it's good and it's creative yeah have you traveled to peshawar uh once once yeah once, How, did uh, you get to see anything there or it was just for not me? much it was for it was a um, official trip so you know it's just when you come and go yeah. so but it's two hours here so we're planning on going back uh one of these days. Yeah. I mean, it's two hours, so it's great. Not... And so you mentioned you've actually gotten the chance to see a lot of the country. What would you say is both your favorite uh, place that you visited here in Pakistan? Uh, well, concerning cities, certainly Lahore, it's, uh, you know, a very fascinating city. Mm. It's very ancient and it's uh, very hectic and alive, also from the cultural point of view. Karachi is also very, very nice. It's um, on the sea, so you know, it's, uh, it has a particular atmosphere. But apart from cities, uh, Islamabad, you know, it's called the green city because we are surrounded by green and it's very quiet and clean and calm. So very nice to live here. But apart from cities, you know, the nature in Pakistan is amazing. But I'd say that my, my, my favorite place is uh, Swat. Really? Yeah. Yes. Huh. Saidu Sharif is a small town. It's, it's, a, it's a great town and we go there pretty often because there is a, you know, our archaeological mission is there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And exactly. so we go there and it's a, it's a wonderful place. Yeah, great. And um, have you been up north to Gilgit? You, you did mention that you've been somewhere. We north. are planning to go. Okay. We are already attempt attempted w once, but then, you know, we had other programs here. Mm. And so we had to postpone it and we are probably going, you know, very soon. Yeah. yeah I'm sure. looking forward because, uh, I mean, it's really fascinating. I saw pictures and I heard stories. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to go to, to the north, to Gilgit, to Umza, mm. Pasu, you know, all those places. But uh, we also visited some heritage uh, uh, sites, uh, for instance, not far from Islamabad. Mm -hmm. I would say an hour and 15, you know, there's a wonderful archaeological site. Uh, Taxila, yeah, and it's very worthwhile to go and pay a visit. Mm. The Swat region is wonderful, and uh, the Italian archaeological mission has discovered, you know, magnificent uh, uh, sites. And um, it's also nice to simply go by the nature, mm. you know, to put your feet in the, in the river. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a very cold water, but, you know, very <laughs> refreshing. <Yeah. laughs> and uh, what about your children? Have they visited you here ever? No, well, we have one daughter. She's in New York and yeah. she's uh, study. She's finished, actually. She's mm. graduated and got married also. And uh, <coughs> She is a, a, an aspiring actress, oh. and so a couple of times we had uh, we had booked the plane and the flight and everything, and then uh, she had uh, she got uh, she got auditions, auditions yeah. and roles. Oh, okay. and so on. but and she's so planning she, to come. Absolutely. But she'll be coming. Yeah. She and her husband. Yeah, they are both eager to come. Yeah, I'm sure after hearing all your stories, <laughs> that's yeah. great. And so you must have a very active social life here, like you mentioned. You must be getting invited to dinners and so on and so forth. And you must have so many Pakistani acquaintances and friends now. How would you say getting to know Pakistanis on that level has changed your perception of the country, or has it? Well, as uh, I said, I already had a very good uh, perception yeah. before coming. 
so um, it simply confirmed yeah. that <laughs> you know what I was thinking you know before coming and um, there's not much I can say if not that you know uh, they are very great people and it's very nice to be here because yeah. uh, you feel uh, closeness if I if you see what I mean yeah and it's easy to talk uh, about everything you know and uh, um, Pakistani like to eat so it's also very uh, nice to sit around the table you know maybe exchange recipes you know yeah. and uh, things like that <laughs> so do you have any favorite Pakistani dishes that you really love Yes, I love uh, uh, pretty much uh, their kind of uh, the way of cooking the chicken mm -hmm. and the mutton mm. and they cook wonderfully the um, vegetables, uh, rice, um, they have very nice desserts, yeah. very nice desserts mm. and the only little minus if I may say so, is that um, I have problems in eating very spicy food. Oh, okay, yeah. But coming back, you know, to the hospitality and uh, the kindness of the people, uh, when we are invited, they keep, you know, the spicy very low. Mm. So, for me, it's paneer all the way. It's oh, my favorite. Paneer. It's my favorite dish. <laughs> but coming back to you know the Pakistani people, it's uh, apart from the hospitality and so on. They're very solid. Yeah. The, 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 the people here are serious. They're hardworking. They're, I mean, using a, an abused term, the human capital in this country is amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. So you get to know actually that you, you have the, the feeling, and now, but after three and a half years, it's much more than a feeling. It's become a conviction that these are serious people that, can, uh, that they can work for the country and for, them, for themselves and for the country. And it, it, it's really, it's, 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 it's a great people. I mean, yeah. they are friendly, they're fun loving, uh, they, but, you know, when it's time to work or time to do business or you do it seriously. Yeah. I was, in fact, I say, I mean, this is a vertical country yeah. because it, it is really, it, uh, it, it's, it's a country which, uh, thanks to its people, can get through anything. So now we've finally reached the part of the program where I always ask our guests to sign our visitor's book. So let's open it for you. All right, let's see what you wrote. Thank you so much. Okay, so thank you for a wonderful interview, which has allowed us to think back on our lives in Pakistan and the beautiful times we have lived in this amazing country. Great. And then Lydia Pontecorvo, it has been really nice to meet you and to have the chance to once uh, once more talk about amazing Pakistan, which we consider our second home. Thank you. And. Thank you so much for having me here. It has been a wonderful afternoon. I hope you continue to have a great time in this wonderful country. Thank you Thank very much. You. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank very you. much. And you are very beautiful. Thank you. That's it for today. Please join me again next week. Goodbye.